Praise the Lord. Happy resurrection. Really, if you know God, every day is resurrection day. So, to me, it's just a day that it's kind of like ceremonious, ceremoniously celebrated. However, 24-7-365, Jesus is Lord. This morning I got into some heavy, heavy revelation. Heavy revy on resurrection day. About God moving on. You know, the big church across the world that even billions of people are interacting with uh, has Jesus on the cross, on the wall, with the nails through his wrist and feet. But he's not there. So that's error. And people consider Christ the suffering Savior, you know, and the one walking with the lamb over his shoulder. No, well, he'll do that, but he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, ever make it living to make an intercession for us. What is he praying about? Us to remain stuck? No. <laughs> Before I get to my man, I, I have a text for I have a text for this session and let, let, let's Look at Psalm 19, but before that, I want to recap something that I did earlier in Isaiah. Help me, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2. Let me hold my... Let the cheetah hold my place in Psalm and my... Giraffe, hold my place in uh, Isaiah. In Isaiah, he said he'll, he'll in, in verse uh, 4, he said he'll judge between the nations, between peoples, and he'll rebuke many people. Yeah? Before that, he told us to look up, go up, high places, mountains. You watch this morning's video. Uh, it'll be out uh, soon enough. And I, wanna, I want everybody to see that. I explained this a bit more in detail, but I want to just refer to this quickly. And many people sh shall, shall come and say, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. Watch this. To the house of God. Where's Jacob today? He's somewhere else. He's not here. I love Jerusalem, and I love Jacob, and I love Judah. It's the Judah and Jerusalem. I found that in some of the scriptures here, uh, especially the, the first verse of Isaiah 2. The word that Isaiah, the son of, what's his father's name? Amos, A-M-O-Z, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Guess what? He didn't see it. Con he saw it concerning them because they were around at the time. But he, he saw it concerning me because I'm here now. If you were to talk to Isaiah and ask him a question, hey, uh, Dr. Isaiah, did you see Dr. Thomas uh, anywhere uh, that this would be relevant to him? He'd go, oh, yes. Oh, the prophet of God in our generation. The cloud of witnesses are praying, for, are standing with him. Let him take it and go ahead with it. Or is it just for Judah and Jerusalem? Of course not. The Acts of the Apostles, were they, did, did, did miracles pass away with them? Of course not. You know, there's some religious crazy people that said this thing they call, it's not sensational, it's cessational, which is really stupid. Sensational things are wonderful. Sensational things are stupid and in error. So he said, he said, uh, you know, they say things like, miracles pass away with the last apostle. You know what? Your brain, your brain function passed away somewhere along the way with you. And your spirit got cut off from the Holy Ghost along the way. That's what happened to you. You're the cessation, you're the cessation not, not the reality of God moving. You are the one. If you say something like that. So the miracles didn't pass away. 
Hello, I have to say this. I'm teaching the word here. Miracles didn't pass away, nor did the promise of what God said in Isaiah chapter 2 pass away and not be relevant to us. Of course, it is very relevant to us. Hmm. Oh, yeah. The mountain of the Lord's house. He said, it will, well, can I prove to you what I just said from Scripture? I found something here. This is amazing. Guess what? Because I have the book here, you don't have to wait to ask Isaiah. Dr. Prophet Isaiah, the great general, the, the prophet of the Lord. Eternals, who wrote 66 chapters in his book, out of the 66 books, his great book had 66 chapters, like the Bible has 66 books. Isaiah was the most amazing man. I mean, wow. W-O-W -W in caps a trillion times. Wow, 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 and another million wows. However... God actually had him throw it in here because the second verse said, The word of the Lord that Isaiah, the son of, a son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Now watch this. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days. Why did he jump from where he was to the latter days? What are the latter days? Isaiah lived, I said this this morning, Isaiah lived almost 3,000 years ago. Now, where many centuries past him, even when Jesus was walking the earth, and now we're 2,000 years past Jesus. So are we in the latter days? And then you could say, have we entered the last days? It seems so, doesn't it, when you look around? But Jesus said in Matthew 24, don't despair because the end is not yet. And then he said in another place, occupy until I come. Do business until I come. Keep going. Can you stop sliding your feet? Thank you. So the Lord said, the, the mountain of the Lord's house shall or will be established on the top of the mountains. Why? Up. Psalm 121 says, and I'm just introing this a little bit and I'm going to get into some things. The Lord said, look up to the hills and once come to your help, help comes, your help comes from the Lord. Psalm 121 is a beautiful psalm. It tells us to look up. Why? Why did he say go up to the mountains? Why did he say the nations will flow up to it? Because it will, it will be exalted above the hills and all nations shall bow. What? No, shall flow to it. Flow which way? Upward. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God, of the God, of the God, Jacob. <laughs> hey, that was what was going on then, but he's the God of all of us now, not just Jacob, eh? He will teach us his ways, watch us now, and we will walk in his paths. He will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his paths. Then for out of Zion shall flow, shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Well, that's where it was now, but now where is it? What city am I in? And he'll judge between the nations and rebuke many people. Why? First of all, why did you say go up? Why did you say go up? Because down is crowded with a lot of mess. When you go up, there's less noise. The higher you go, the closer you are to the sky and away from the down, you know, everything that flows down on the ground level. Which is quieter, more peaceful, more fresh air, more expanse, the further you can see. You know, where I'm sitting right now, I'm on the top floor. Could you call this the penthouse? Yes, the pent, because the pent means the top. P-E-N-T -E means five, which is the five 
star, five senses, five whatever, and top of the top. Why would they call a house the penthouse? It's the top house. So from outside, right, you know, if I look out this way and this way, I can see, I can see the whole expanse of the city and uh, all around the landscape. But if guess what? If I'm down on the ground floor, I can't see any of that. You look, you'll just see the wall of the property next to you and whoever's there. You ever see people, they sit everywhere along the way, along the road, but you go up high, they can't be there. First of all, they won't climb. Second of all, they don't have access to go up. Thirdly, the top is expensive. You want to go to the top level? It's pricey. And then you can't, uh, you, you, you can't see a lot of people there because they don't have the means to be there. That's deep. So why did God keep saying, he say, keeps saying, go up, 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 up. Why? He said he rebuked many people. A lot I can say here. Then he said in verse 7, this is Isaiah 2, the land, their land is also f filled with silver and gold, and there's no end to their treasures. Their land is also full of horses, and there is no end to their chariots. What does it mean today? Cars, vehicles, SUVs, vans, trucks. There's lots of them, and we're going to have many of them. Can you say amen? doesn't matter who does what or how, which way this went or that went or whatever happened along the way. No, we can, we can have, because he said, he, said, he said there's no end to their treasures. And their land is full of horses and there's no end to their chariots. There's a place in the scripture that is ap appropriate to the time of the months that we're living in now. Second Chronicles 32, Second Chronicles 31, and Second Chronicles 32. It talked about heaps of treasures being so vast and so much and so plentiful that there's not room to count it. They had heaps of treasures left over after God blessed them. They still had more left over. Here it is in Isaiah. You think it was just in Chronicles. That Chronicles, you know, Solomon's deal, the days when they, when they had a lot of wealth, a lot of treasure, a lot of gold. It wasn't just them. Isaiah said that the land is full of treasures. There's no end to it. He said there's no end to their treasures, to their treasures. He didn't say the treasures. He said their treasures. I put myself right there in this equation. For God, his way is perfect. I want to talk about that today. His way is perfect, but how is the ways of man? He said there's no end to their treasures, and he said their land, he said there's no, he said their land is also full of horses, and there's no end, there's no end to their chariots. Take the word literally. I do. It didn't say these are for some other people. I went to a place again yesterday. It's very thoroughly disgusting, and I don't want to go back there anymore. I didn't like going there to begin with, some people do, and I thought, ah, it's, in, it's around in a certain place, a little bit convenient, seemed like it's decent, and you look at the food, and you feel the spirit, and you look at all those heathens coming in there, the idol worshipers, the infidels, you know, the people of the other team. They're all there. They own it. They swim there. They do it. I mean, I, I don't mean swimming, literally. I mean, they're all like in and out, in and out, and I thought, what am I doing? What, what am I doing patronizing this place? Let me go to a place that's independently owned. Let me go to a five-star hotel. Okay, there's a few. They're owned by different people who may not be the best people, but maybe it's not that group of people. That group of people would like to, and if you can read into what I'm saying without me saying names, they, they, they want to buy everything. They would like to own everything, and they hate you. They hate the people of the land. They're, in, they're, they're intruders. They don't want anything for you. They only want things for themselves, and they run their business like that. They make, they make the, the local people act like slaves to so that. These waitresses would come to the table like 40 times while I'm sitting there having a conversation with a ministry partner. For We were there for a good hour and change at least, you know. And they came at least 30, 40 times to try to take things off the table. What happened? The people that owned the place, those heathens, those, I, those infidels, those other team people, those the other religion, yeah, they tell them, hurry up, hurry up, push people, 
take, go take their plates, go take their glasses. I know it's a conspiracy. Because then you think, oh, now you're missing something. Now you have to order something else. I was with a man from Australia the other day. He's not a foreigner. He, he went out for a minute to, I think, to grab a phone call because I was online. We were doing a live broadcast and I was still flowing. And he, you know, I guess a, an important call came. So he, did, he, he politely didn't want to disturb me, which is really great. Some people have some morals. He's a white Caucasian gentleman from Australia. He has some morals. He has some character. Let me just say that. Not everybody doesn't have. And I'm not picking on anybody, but just let me make the statement for what it is. So he stepped away from it. He came back. This waiter came and took his iced coffee. And, and he was like, I looked at them like, what did you do that for? Then the guy's like, ooh. You know, once he does that, he makes a mistake. He can't do anything about it. Because if he, if he has to go get another one, he's going to have to pay for it. So he'll, pro he'll add it, try to act like, do this, you know, like he's sorry and all that. I had a pastor come up to me and say all that. He didn't call me back, preached there, kept my books, gave, you know, no character, no character. God knows. They don't, it's like a prostitution ring, the ministry. What do they want? They want a hooker? What do they want? A pimp? What are they, a pimp? They want to play a game? They want an experience? You know what I mean? I hate to uh, be uh, likening, likening it to that. But no relationship afterwards. You know, you try to call them. They don't respond, and it came up, you know, and I said, hey, I tried calling you. You didn't answer the call, and you didn't even call me back. What's wrong with you? He goes, he does this to me, like this, like this, like bow, it's like, oh, forgive me. I said, no, pick yourself up. And I looked at him, and I pointed him with fire, and I said, call me. Do you know he never did? What, what do I think about that man today? I have no, I, I've lost respect for him. He can't pick up the phone just because I said something. I'm good enough to preach in his church because I'm a famous prophet. I'm world renowned. You know, some miracles are going to happen when I come there. But after the fact, can he even obey my instruction? Yeah. Is that a relationship I want? Is that a relationship? Not that I want or not. Forget about that part. Is it a relationship that's genuine or legitimate? You say, call me. And then they don't call. I don't care how busy you are. If someone, if someone of high renown tells me to call them, if I don't call them, I don't know if I, I don't know if I could, if I could sleep. I don't know if I could sleep. I mean, I wouldn't be able to. Sometimes a correspondence with a person, just a saint from anywhere, over whatever they want something, they want prayer. They wrote me. I have to reply. A partner wrote me their prayer request. I have to send a message back. I do it even if it's two, three in the morning. I won't forget. I can't forget. You know, and I'm like that. You know, I was thinking, I was thinking earlier, I was praying earlier in between meetings, and I was thinking, I was thinking, God, you know, I'm very nice, you know. Am I too nice? The Lord said, No. It's good to be like that. Can you imagine he said that to me? I said, Yeah, I know. I'm happy. I'll be more nice. I go all out of my way to help. Like somewhere I was today. I'm helping them with their directions. I don't have any business doing that. Am I a secretary, a driver, a logistics man, a protocol man? It seems I'm everything. I want to shout at people and tell me, I'm not a secretary, an errand boy, or a what? A washwoman to take care of, a wash person to take care of the... What the heck are, what the heck are you making me do? You make me do everything. I open the door and close it. I fix this, I fix that, I try to think about arranging things, like, you know, there has to come a time when other people do that stuff, but I keep doing it anyway. So people haven't, a lot of people having trouble, including us, to figure out how to get to this location we were going to, and I ended up, like, creating a whole system of writing down specific details on how to get there, and then also, uh... Thank you, Pastor, wherever you're from. I see your name there. So, the, the, so the Lord, um, I thought, and I, I said to him, I said, I'm helping build your church. He, looked, he didn't say anything. You know, he just bowed his head like he felt, maybe he felt a little ashamed. Then he told me, oh, someone's supposed to help us put a sign up here, but they, they dilly, they're dilly-dallying with the time. 
I said, cancel your business with them. He said, well, it's already paid. I said, go get it this week and tell them you'll kill them if they don't give it to you. Yeah. And then never do business with them again. He said, I'll do that. Him, I kind of believe. I kind of believe him when he said that, that he'll do that. And I said, come see me. We talk more. He's like, oh, prophet, please pray for me. Pray for the ministry. Pray for me as the pastor. Pray for the church. I said, I already did. I said, follow the message that I preached in the pulpit, line by line. You do all of that, everything that I said, it's one long prophecy. God will honor you, and you'll see breakthrough. And I said, I'm not going to sit here and praying all day, acting like I'm praying. It's like the nice religious thing to do. I said, come see me a different day. Bring me an offering. I didn't say that, but anybody should. And uh, let's pick it up next time. We'll talk more and go further. Plan the next events. We're going to plan some big events together and get a lot of people involved. Let's do that. We're done here. God spoke what he said. Take it seriously and work with it, you know. I said something this morning. If you can't follow an instruction, you shouldn't be too keen on getting a new one. Do the ones you had before. At least do all those and then get a new one and then ask God. Now, God, what do you want me to do now? What can I do now? What can I focus on now that's meaningful to you, that's meaningful to my mission in life? And the the assignment that I have from you to do something in accordance to the work that I'm doing. What can I do? I didn't plan to say all that, but the Holy Ghost did. I'm trying to move into the next part of this message, and I'm still in the intro here in Isaiah. Let me go to... uh, I think I'm done with Isaiah for the moment. God talked about his... Te- oh, oh, yeah, one more thing. Thank you, Lord. One more thing. Their land is full of horses, and there is no end to their chariots, and there's no end to their treasures. Isaiah 2, 7. Yeah? Verse 8. But the land is full of idols. See, this is what happened. This is, this is what, now, this is what you have to deal with. This is where you dance with the devil and with evildoers. So why did the Lord say, go up, 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 up? Because the higher you go, you get away from all the noise that's down on the ground. Like the eagles fly. They don't cluck with the chickens on the ground. And all the insects and whatever. Whatever is crawling or whatever mess is on the ground. From the elements or whatever. Animal, you know, people, animals, noise. You go up high, there's nothing there but the sky and you and God. I remember one time I was in California, I went up to the top of the Sierra and Nevada mountains. Lord have mercy. One of the mountain, the mountain I was on is 14,000 feet high. 14,000 feet. Amazing. You go all the way up there and when you get on this one particular mountain where the Sierra, where the big, uh, what do they call those? They call it the Sierra Nevada Mountains, but there's a kind of tree. The sequoia tree. There's redwoods that are more of a light red color, and the sequoia are a little bit more reddish brown. They're the same tree. They're the tallest trees in the world, and they're on this mountain range in California, in USA. Sequoia trees. The General Sherman tree, I stood at the bottom and looked up. It's a, fam- a world-famous landmark. It's called General Sherman Whoever the heck he was, I don't know or care. S-H-E-R-M-A-N, General Sherman. Look it up. You'll see the tree. It's 275 feet tall, 81 feet around in diameter circumference. And you stand there and look at it, and you're like, where am I? Talk about a tree that's thousands of years old and grew to that height. The tree is 275 feet tall. That's taller than the building I'm in. I'm on the top floor in the penthouse. This is very high up. You look down, it's like, whoa. That tree is taller than this. So when you're on the top of the mountain and you look at the other mountains, and from this particular mountain where the General Sherman tree is and some others, a whole line of sequoias, You can look down and you see all the other mountains that are below. 
This one's higher, so you sing other mountain tops. They go like this, like that, you know. But but you're above them all. Can I tell you? Talk about a quiet place. You could get bored if you don't have anything going on in your head. I knelt down to pray, and honestly, I don't know what happened to me. After a while, I got I got restless. I couldn't take the quiet. I wasn't used to it. You know, so I got up and walked around. I wanted to look at some of the other part of the mountain range. And then I, I rented a hot rod car. I rented a kind of car that I have. Very fast turbo super engine uh, Trans Am, Pontiac Trans Am back then. Convertible. Hot rod. You hit that thing, psh, it takes off. Kind of like people might know the Corvette of today. But the Corvettes are too small. I can't fit in them. I don't like Corvettes. People like their Corvettes. Well, you're short. You're shorter than I am. Less leg room, less arm room, whatever. I can't even. F I tried to sit in one. Nice, cute car. I looked at a million, one point one or one point two million dollar house. I was looking at houses at one time. I was shopping, thinking what house I'd like to live in. I went to all these houses. I had this preacher come to my house where I was living a five-bedroom house, and he went, oh, like he's going to pass out. How some people live. He walked into my master bedroom. My master bedroom is like the size of an apartment. My master bedroom is like the size of this whole apartment. And walk-in closets, two of them, uh, master suite bathroom down at the end with jacuzzi, separate shower, big, long mirror. The mirror is like the whole wall from end to end. This is, this is my, my personal... Uh, uh, boudoir my personal bathroom in my master's my master bedroom suite. this guy walked in he couldn't believe it and i wanted to say to him never saw him again by the way i think he got short-circuited because he he was shocked at my how, how i live how my house was and i, I wanted to tell him bro uh, you should see where i just was all this week every day i was up in this other part of town where the million dollar mansions are one million two million dollars back then they're a lot more now now they're about five million same house would be about four or five million now because the price is jacked straight up. Back then when they were 1.2, 1.3, 1.5, 1.7, 1.9, 2.0. 2. I don't even think it was two. I think all of them were about up to about two million dollars. I think two was, two was about the highest. These houses are stupendous. You can't believe it. There's one I'll never forget. It had like a, it was on like a, a whole two acres. And the backyard was all uh, surrounded by hedges and a fence, and you couldn't see. And it had a conservatory, like a protected property in the back, that if you went through the back, you could be in the forest. No one could build there. It's government conserved land for some reason. No one will, even the government won't take it. They won't build it. There's something that was special about it, that they made it a conservatory. No one could touch it. So it's as if you have like a, a 50 acres to yourself. You know, like it's your land because you walk, you can walk out your fence and go back there. There's no one else there. They have no reason to be there. There's no, there's no house that could be built there. So I love that place, man. It had this thick, what they called Abraham. I think they, they call it Abraham grass. If I'm not mistaken, it was Abraham. I think it was Abraham. Why would they call it Abraham? Abraham was rich. I mean, Abraham, was, Abraham is the blessed. Father of nations, father of land, father of property. I think it's called Abraham grass, the thickest, most green. You walk on it with your bare feet. You feel like you, you're walking on pillows, like you're, and you could feel the wetness and the thickness of the grass. I was like, my Jesus. I would put up a net and like have my, you know, I'd be swinging some golf shots, you know, making my own little driving range and have my private thing out there, put a fountain or something and make it. I had all these ideas and this other guy, he couldn't handle the one I was in, which was like way less than that. See, so there are levels to going up. <laughs> and the promise of Isaiah, Isaiah, the prophet of judgment, wild prophet who predicted the Messiah in 53 and in 22. Oh, that was Psalm 22, excuse me. And then the glory and splendor of the kingdom in Isaiah 60 and then the anointing in 61. So many things, and the judgments in between, so many things Isaiah did. What business did he have saying that there's no end to the treasures?
And the silver and the gold is there. And the land is full of horses and chariots. Come on. What does that mean today? It's full of cars. I'll say something publicly. I don't know. You know, somebody will probably tell me, a prophet, you, you, know, you, you shouldn't maybe say all that. I don't care. I'm going to say it because I want to say it. I want to say what I want to say. Amen. Because God may talk to somebody. I had one bishop, bishop, okay, who promised to buy me a, a Land Rover. A Defender, which is uh, not a Defender, a uh, Discovery, which is really a Range Rover. Well, that was my, that my, that's my car in the U.S., the HSC, which you call the Vogue here, the big one, pearl, white with the autobiographies, the autobiography package with the navy blue interior seats, leather with the pinstripes around it, all that. That's my USA car. Uh, you want to see a picture? Ask me. If I like you, I'll show you. I have photos in my phone. Beautiful. After it was shined and cleaned and detailed, the chrome on the wheels were shined out. And with the palm trees above where it was, boom, I have the photos. I, ha I have them right here. I could show them to you right now. So and he offered that and then made an excuse that it was other people involved and the whole thing just flopped. And I... And he wrote something like the deal flopped or whatever. I'm like, and, and I think, so is that the state of our relationship also? Did our relationship also flop? But I didn't, I didn't reply to that. I wanted to. I thought about it. And he never called to say anything. Just that little short message. After we prayed under the anointing all day last Sunday, which was Palm Sunday, today's Resurrection Sunday. You call Easter. I don't use the term because it's a pagan term. It's resurrection. It's the day that Christ rose from the dead and came out of the tomb on the Sunday. Well, today is Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. That's the day that it is right now, in natural terms. Last week was what they call the Palm Sunday. So we prayed under the anointing. We we're praying. I had some major, two major apostles. We were in the office. We were praying under the anointing. And sure enough, that stirred the heavens. Then the rainfall came that night, and lightnings hit the whole city. And torrents of water came down. It was a supernatural sign and a wonder of something new. And the very next morning, I get this message. So that the anointing triggered that, that it wasn't real. You see? How could people not be real in what they say when they were the one that offered it? But guess what? Isaiah said to me, ask him. You don't have to ask him. Dr. Isaiah in heaven, can I have an appointment? Can I ask you? Is this for Prophet Thomas Manton IV in his day right now? Yeah. You don't have to find him because the Lord had him throw in the verse, the second, second verse, Isaiah 2.2. 2. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days. There's the answer. So we don't have to wait to ask him. <laughs> that the mountain of the Lord's house will be established on the top of the mountains. Why up? Because that's where there's no noise. That's where you could be in the realm of the glory. And it shall be exalted above the hills, and the nations shall flow to it. Now, it can't just be some top of a mountain that's inaccessible in the natural realm. It's really, this is all very typological and spiritual as well as natural, because how do the nations flow? Well, they're going to go to the mountain, and they're all going to make their hike and trek up the hill? Not necessarily. It just means it's in a high place. It's in a high realm. Hello. Ah, Lord Jesus. Kara brosha kora farandela saleshalai. Woo! I feel it. There's no end to the treasures. There's no end to the horses. The land is full of horses and chariots. But then there's idols in the land, see? And, then, and this caused the judgment of God to be released. And then and warfare for the people. So in our day, I say it's very appropriate right there. This is a symbolic, this is a picture of where we're at. Where they were then, where we are now. Idols in the land to be dealt with, yeah? But as far as us, treasures... 
Why do they call this grass, this beautiful grass, Abraham grass? Because Abraham is the father who's blessed and rich. Why do they call it Abraham? I was shocked. Abraham grass. Why would they call it Abraham? I asked them that. They scratched their head. They looked puzzled. They were like, I don't know. Who came up with that? I thought, oh, I could guess. Because he was the land man. No end to their land. No end to the treasures. No end to the horses. No end to the chariots. No end to the silver and the gold. Nobody told you this scripture. I don't know where you found a preacher who found this for you, but I found it today because God had me find it. Can I tell you something supernatural when it happened? The minute I put my Bible on the pulpit where I was speaking, you'll see the video. It's going to be coming out. Give me two days. Please let's finish it in two days, not three, four, five. Please, please, two days. Second day should be done. Let's, let's do that thing and knock it out because people need to see what the Lord said. And this one now. This is a, a double header today, Resurrection Day. So let's say in two days, not tomorrow, let's say the next day, the next night, we should have it. Okay? Let's have it by then. And the minute I put my Bible on the pulpit and went like this, it happens to me a lot, I went like this. And I looked down, <clears throat> and there was Isaiah 2. I told the people, some of them looked at me like, what? They didn't even know. Some people, some people, not only do they know where I am, but they don't know where they are. So I said some funny things in the message you need to see. I said, all of what you have here is your fault. I'm not from here. Yeah? I didn't do it. Thus, this is going to be... I think I've said this like 50, 40, 30, about 10, 20 times. About the horses and the chariots and the silver and the gold and the land. Did you get it? Did you get it? That's what God, did you get it? That's what God is saying to us. I think I've, I've elaborated on it very well. Now, I want to get to, but I, but I got the message when I stood there and I said, when I was sitting over there before I came up here, I didn't have even a thought. That would scare a lot of preachers. That would scare people. How do you not have your sermon prepared? I, my life is a sermon. My life is a sermon writer. I'm prepared. Something I felt like I wanted to say uh, before I thought of this, that, you know, this is an amazing ministry. This ministry that God's given me is phenomenal because, can I tell you why? Because you're hearing direct from God. I hear God, he tells me something, and I say exactly what he said. So I took an intermission to pray a little bit, to just metamorphosize into the next session, next season, in between the two meetings today. Because I wanted to just take a breath, and I wanted to listen to God. Now, here it is. I'm going to tell you what the Lord said. Actually, I fell asleep for a few minutes, which is good. That's the art of a great preacher. You do a session, you go back, you lay down for a minute, you just sleep, even if it's for five minutes, just that you fall into the state of sleep and wake up again. It's like you begin a new day. It's a little trick. I'll teach you something. I don't do it much because I don't have time, but when I can do it, oh my. Even if it's for five, ten minutes. Because you, you exit the session of the day that was and you open up a new one, a new day, all in the same day. Now, you don't, we don't have the luxury of doing that as much as we'd like, but when you can, here's what the Lord said. I, I woke, I, I just, just opened my eyes and, and I heard this, I heard this. The lay of the land is what people have done with it. The lay of the land is what people have done with it. And that wasn't me. People have to account for like what they did. If they messed it up, it's nobody's fault but theirs. God had me telling people today, come out of, 
come out of where you've been and begin to step up to where you're going. <sighs> then I heard this. Psalm 37, 37. Mark the perfect man, for the end of that man is peace. See, even this phone, I keep wanting to set it for 10 minutes of screen time, and it keeps resetting itself back to 30 seconds. Then when I'm trying to keep a verse open, it goes off on me, and I have to keep hitting it, so I just reset it. See, somebody did that. That's a natural analogy. Somebody did that. Some idiot did that. Why would you make a default setting 30 seconds? Who told you to make it 30 seconds? When I click 10 minutes, leave it there. It doesn't stay. It just keeps resetting itself back. And I have to keep going back and playing with it. Settings on things, on technology, you know, like you should have it where it's set up where you can use things the way you want. Set up your environment. Another thing is whatever people taught you on their way and how to do certain things, you don't need to do it just because that's the way they did it. You can do your own thing. Do something brilliant. When God possesses a person, they can't stay like everybody else. You may look like them, be in the same town, of the same tribe, the same ethnicity, the same whatever, have some similar mannerisms, a way of talking and all that. But you're different because God has taken over residence in you. Very few people are like that. When I see someone... When I see someone that's very unique and different, I think God has gotten a hold of you. And I marvel at that because he's certainly gotten a hold of me. So I wrote this afterwards. The lay of the land is what people have done with it. So who did what? Guess what? Whoever did what has to be undone. Yesterday I had a chance to go to a thing and I didn't see I had any function in it, but though I probably should have gone. I didn't go. I decided not to go. Why? I don't feel like I have an obligation to go. What was I going to do there? Go stand around and go, oh yeah, I think I'm trying to like act like I'm celebrating with you. Meanwhile, I have no part in it. I would have been very, you know, I looked at the program online and said I would have been extremely irritated had I gone there. Thank God I didn't do it. Now, there's another event going on in the same uh, organization in the coming few days, and it, it's very meaningful. And the Lord already spoke to me about going, and there's a part for me to play there. Something great is going to happen for me in that uh, arena. And there are people coming from many other countries for, for a conference. So I have a part in that because I'm also going to do things in that other country. But this other thing is like, so why, why do we have to do things based on a cultural whatever? We don't. I know, I, know, I know that sounds amazing to some people. You say, wow, you mean I don't have to do everything the way all of our people do? No, you don't. Find the way of God for his way is perfect. Arabara <laughs> shala. Isaiah 58, verse 1, CEB, which is Common English Bible or whatever. What, is that what it means? Common English, whatever. Shout loudly, don't hold back, raise your voice like a trumpet, announce to my people their crime and to the house of Jacob their sins. Now, he said here in Isaiah 2, he rebukes many people. Why? Because there's a lot of things that are wrong in every kind of way. And it's our job to fix that. And then deal with the idols, but remembering that there's treasure for everything that we need and want. So the opportunity that this man had to, to, to buy me an SUV, what they promised, okay? I'm saying this for a reason. Maybe there's someone listening to me right now, you have the means to do it for God's servant. Get in touch with me and do it. I don't care what it costs. A cheap version of a Range Rover, a car that had a six-cylinder, four-wheel drive, Air suspension, meaning it can go up, it's good for the rough roads. Uh, panoramic sunroof with the back roof that opens so we can film documentaries, safaris, animals, whatever. Things on the land, we can have a cameraman up there and over here, and we can film my documentaries. That vehicle is for the ministry. 
for the work of God across the land. We need it right now. You put bigger tires on it. You put the extra special shocks. Maybe you could fool with the springs a little bit. But, that, but I don't know about the springs. This car has air suspension. There's buttons you could push that raises or lowers it compared. And you could go in rough terrain. And when you're on the rough roads, you don't feel it. Okay. Beautiful leather seats. Beautiful sunroof. Look at the sky. It's perfect for moi, for God's prophet. I need one right now in Jesus' name. Then I felt led to do this. I found this, uh, this card that talks about TV partners, okay? I'm doing more outreach through media, and we need help. We need expansion of equipment. We need more things. I don't want to talk about an offering just to bless me or sow into me, because some people don't even, you know, I don't know how they even take that. But for projects, two things I need. We need a great vehicle, an SUV right now. Right now, right now. And I'll give you a hint. Land Rover Discovery. Is it number four or which one is it? Not the diesel, not the 2.0. Don't like them. Petrol, V6, four-wheel drive, panoramic uh, uh, sunroof, panoramic roof with the roof that goes back. It can be a few years old. It doesn't have to be brand new. Brand new is very expensive. I understand that. Now I think they're importing around uh, the local environs here. They're importing cars that are seven years old. So that would be 2017. That's okay. Low miles in good shape. Let's check it out. Let's get one. Even the color doesn't matter. If the color is not preferable, let's say you find a good one and the color is a funny color, we can put a wrap on it. You know the wrap stuff? You could put that uh, coating thing over the over it to make it the color you want, and then when you want to, you leave it the original color. It actually will protect. Someone said, "Well, that damaged." Someone asked me, "Well, that damaged the paint?" No, it protects the paint because now you're putting an extra coating over the car. You're you're sealing the paint, and then when you want it back to the original color, there's a way they just peel it off and wash it off and take it off. So the color doesn't matter. I mean, it has to be this color. No, it doesn't. It has to have the specifications to drive for the work of God. I see these big vans I like. I don't need them right now, but we'll need them in the days ahead. Those big uh, buses, beautiful buses to take people on trips, comfortable seats. We can move people around. I don't need that right now. First thing we need, we need this SUV right now. I've never said this before in my whole life. I have never that I can remember. And I'm sure my memory is brilliant. I haven't, I haven't ever said this. Lord, the person who has it for me, bring them right now in Jesus' name. Get one that's just been imported. Get it off the ship. Get one that just came into the port. Let's go. Let's go get one. Don't buy it in the capital city at these car dealers where they jack up the price. Go to the source where they import them, where they bring them. Let's find one there. Let's be creative. Let's go get one. In Jesus' name, I believe God. So also, I found this card that talked about partners for television, okay? And for media and things like that. So the, the more you sow into this grace, the more that's going to happen for you and as it all accumulates through many people, we're going to be able to do the projects to reach the world with the word of the Lord. This ministry is amazing because God is speaking. I heard this word, the lay of the land is what it is because of the people that did whatever they did with it, the way they did it. Okay? So when you look at something and it's untoward and it doesn't seem right, it could be fixed. It needs to be worked on. Things in your life that are not right. You need to work on them. We need to ask God. I said this this morning in the message. We need to ask God, what do I do now? All right? Let me, so let me, let me move ahead. Now, uh, 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 Psalm 19, please. So God said, go ahead and rebuke. He said he rebukes many people in Isaiah 2. I've been in Isaiah 2. I keep saying it. Let's go to uh, 
Psalm 19, all right? Verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. Doing what? Doing what? Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You can get wise as a simple person. You can become wise because of the testimony of the Lord, because you're working with his law. How does that match Isaiah 2, what I've been speaking about all day? The law of the Lord will come out from Zion. We'll build the house, we'll go up. He'll teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. Isaiah 2, 3, second part of the verse. And we'll walk in his paths, and then out of Zion shall flow forth the law of God. That is astounding. Now, Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord, now, continuing on, what is the law of the Lord? It's perfect, converting the soul, making us walk according to his path. Do you see? Do you see? One to the other. You see that? Isaiah 2, 3. And Psalm 19, 7 and 8. This, verse 8, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, than much fine gold. Better to have the way of God than to have much gold. And even much fine gold. Imagine that. The psalmist said, Sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb is his word and his truth. And by keeping his ways, there is great reward. Ay, 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 ay. Whatever you can do to walk with him and according to his plan is beneficial. Everybody pray. I feel the anointing falling here. The anointing is falling all across the world to raise up people to connect with me and further to help us with what the things that God wants us to have. He said there's chariots everywhere. There's horses everywhere. What is that today? Real horses? We don't need a horse. We need a car with four wheels. We can go fast and drive. We do crusades, events, conferences, missions, reach people. Government leaders want to have, have meetings with us. We're at, I had another discussion today about it. In fact, the man of God told me, he said uh, that I was supernaturally uh, ministering with, he said, I have the governor. We have the governor. I said, I know. I have him through other people myself. The governor of this region, the governor of that region, the leaders of everywhere waiting for the law of God to come out of the mouth of God through his servant, his prophet. We are ready to do it. Can you say amen? So everything untoward needs to be turned around and made right. God doesn't like lying. I found a, a resource, uh, a, Bible, a collection of scriptures here. Psalm 112 said, Praise ye the Lord. Blesses the man who fears the Lord that delights greatly in his commandments. His seed will be mighty on the earth and the generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness, his righteousness endures forever. And unto the upright there shall arise light in the darkness. For God is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. In other words, we... Also, we are because we display his nature. A good man shows favor and guides his affairs with discretion. Surely he'll, he'll not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Where? In the presence of God. Don't be afraid of anything, the Bible said also. For his heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord, the one who's righteous. 
These are covenants. My heart is established. I'll not be afraid until I see my desire upon my enemies. Oh, yes. The wicked will see it and be grieved. They'll gnash their teeth and melt away. The desires of the wicked will perish. The one, uh, uh, another covenant note before that. We disperse and give to the poor and help people, and my horn shall be exalted with honor. You see this? These are the ways of God. You see how, you see how all this is flowing together? And another place he said, lie, watch, I gotta say this. Yeah. In heaven, in the heavenly realm, Revelation 21, 27. Hmm? Revelation 21, 27. There will in no wise enter into it, into there, anything that defiles, that works abomination or makes lies. But only the one whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Do you know, if a person's practicing all these evil things, that their name gets blotted out. But thank God that's not me. Thank God. I hope it's not you. It can never be. I have to say this. Whatever you do that's good toward another person, the same God will do for you. The Lord spoke to me today. I thought, Lord, I'm nice. I'm nice to people. I help people. I try to go out of my way to help people. He said, that's good. You should do that. That's my nature. I bless you for that. Keep doing it. The Lord spoke to me a few weeks ago and he said something amazing. He said that I should do all that I can. Even today, it, it was a strain to go. I really, I really was happy when I left. I don't talk to people. I don't tell anybody what I'm thinking. I'm just quiet. I'm just working within my own mind and imagination and heart. I didn't say anything to anybody. But I was telling the Lord and I was speaking it in my own heart. I, I'm very happy. I'm very happy I went where I went today. It, it was really God. There were many churches that were acting like they wanted to have us come today. And because of the celebratory week or whatever you call it, a lot of things going on. It wasn't that convenient naturally. And then some people just don't follow up. But at like almost nine o'clock last night, this pastor called me. Young, young, uh, new breed man in the making. Powerful, powerful servant of God. Good man, good heart. I recognize it, you know, who he is. And he called me and I said, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? In other words, I was saying, I'm coming. Before I said it. Sure enough, we arranged it. He said, please send me your picture. I'll make a poster. <laughs> uh, please send me your biogra biography. I want to read it when I'm introducing you. Yeah. I had to look for it and find it and send it. The Lord, the Lord is amazing. There's some people that he wants to elevate. And this is the day of elevation and expansion. To who? The ones that are good before him. The one that's good before God will receive treasures, will receive blessings. Isaiah 2 again said there's no limit to the treasures of the horses, of the chariots, of the silver, and the gold, and the land. That's four things. The land, the silver, the gold, that's three. It's more than four. Horses and chariots and treasures. Six is the number of man. Yeah. All those six things right there in the midst of all that was going on to build God's house. So I shouted at people, and I don't know if they understood what I was saying. I was waiting for their response, and I told them, it's a question I asked that you could say yes or yes or whatever you want to say. And they looked at me like, I said, don't look at me like that. You're here. You did it. You have to deal with it. I'm praying for you, but it's not my fault. Things are the way they are. And the Lord spoke to me this afternoon. He said, the lay of the land is because of what people did with it. But I want to change everything for the better. Say amen. No limit to the treasure. No limit to the silver. No limit to the gold, the horses, the chariots, and the land. And they kept saying in Isaiah, it's their land. So I asked the question, did God forget about 
provisions for the vision? No. Did God forget about, forget to promise us and give us the treasures that we need? No. It's right there. Did he say who it was for at one time and it wasn't for anybody else? No. He said this is for everybody in the latter times, which we are definitely in right now. Isaiah said it. Can you take that as direct from heaven? If you can't, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to help you. I love how people say, like, when you finish delivering a message and you brought the mind of God from heaven, they still say, okay, let's do something else. Let's pray again. Let's do something else. Let's say something else. And I thought, I've covered it. Yeah, I'll seal it with the, with the, with the word, with a prayer. If you could watch, like, the pastor came up and said, can we pray? Can we pray? You know, I said, yeah. And I just prayed to seal what I had said that it will manifest in everybody's life. So because if you walk according to this plan, go up and build, amen, and learn his ways and walk in his paths, there's no limit to what you'll have. The reward of the Lord is sure. Are you getting this? I see people all over the world. I don't want to take time. I want to jump off here. I don't want to take time. I'm seeing people all over the world like a whirlwind of God is coming to swirl around them to bring them into this thing that he's doing. In Jesus' name. Be a partner. Connect with the grace. PayPal. World Remit. Sendwave. M-Pesa. Bankwire. Western Union, all these ways you can use to send a seed. If you have something to help us with our television ministry and also to help with vehicle, as I mentioned, contact me. And let's, uh, let's, let's get on with the plan that God has to reach nation, the nation and nations with his power and his word in Jesus' name. My book, wow. Is available, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. Also, The Laws of Success is coming out in a reprint. And also, this prophecy book for Kenya. 66 different prophecies for Kenya. Coming out in a reprint. And also, uh, this I'm going to reproduce again on the office of the prophet. Very powerful book, oh my God. And I'm excited and thrilled for you to get it. Other books I've written, The Focus Factor, The Focus Factor, The Benefits of Excellence, The Focus Factor, Success Strategies, I have some other books I found that are in the works that I won't mention now because I'm going to be, I'll get grieved to think that it's going to take me time to finish those, but I have so many. Sometimes I'll speak, I'll speak, uh, even today, even today's flow, it can be a, a book in and of itself. So I want to get to the point also in the realm of our publishing that we just be spinning out books just like that, even through Online means people to the ends of the earth can be, can be catching the revelation everywhere. And Lord, I thank you for raising up partners for this work. You said the land is full of treasures. There's no end to it. There's no end to the horses, no end to the chariots, no end to the silver, no end to the gold, no end to the land. And you didn't say it's just there. You called it our land. You said it's their land. Now, obviously, I'm in that because I'm in the latter days. So Isaiah spoke about me. And I'm sure if you were to ask me, I'm not being cheeky or funny. If you were to ask him, he'd say, oh, yes. Thomas is our friend. Thomas Manton IV, he's, our, he's God's prophet in our generation. Like I was a prophet in mine. He's a, pro, he's a governmental, high-level prophet in his generation. We want to see him succeed with everything he needs and wants. 
You know, the, the connection with heaven is the most vital thing. And we have it. I see the presence of the Lord falling. Just receive the touch of His grace right now. We'll pick this up in another session. The Lord bless you. Keep you, make His face to shine upon you. Give you His peace, but also give you His favor, His power, and His prosperity. Something new is about ready to happen. I know that sounds like a good catchphrase to say, but it's real. This is the day of manifestation. Last Sunday, we saw the heavens open and the rains and lightnings pour out from the heavens after we had our explosive prophetic service in the right in the heart of the capital city. The packed church, great church, wonderful people, full of people that were on fire. And we just had that one service. You know, we couldn't go into many other things. We just did, I just did the one service. And the Lord opened the heavens over the city. It's really, really happening. You know, what we desired from him is really coming into fruition. And this is the day for the manifestation. By the way, that's the theme. That's my theme for the year. Is. Manifestation of the promises. Read Second Chronicles 31 and 32. As a homework assignment, you see the treasures that they had that they couldn't count, and there were heaps left over after they were processing and using what they could. Remember also Moses said, Lord, please, we can't take any more blessing. We have too much. Have you ever known anybody to lift their hand up to God and say, please stop sending, I have too much? Nobody. Who? Who? But Moses had the testimony. And the children of Israel in 2 Chronicles 31 32, they had the testimony. They had too much. When the children of Israel left Egypt, they had too much to carry. And Moses had to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's work with what we have. You know, where are we going to put all this stuff? How are we going to carry it all? That's our God. El Shaddai, the one who's more than enough. In fact, somebody said in a funny way, He's not more than enough. He's too much. And that's true. I want to experience that. How about you? Lift your hands right now, everybody. I want to experience that. I want to experience that. Where I can say, Lord, you, I waited for this. You know, the scripture says this, this man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of his trouble. I waited patiently for the Lord, but now I've seen the day in the land of the living when he's poured out his blessings upon me. That day is here right now in Jesus' name. I prophesy to everyone on this resurrection day, get ready for it. We're going to see it and experience it and live it in manifestation in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Matthew IV. Talk to you on the next one. Be blessed. Share this with everybody. Write to me, partner with me, send your seed right now, and as you do, I'll be praying for you. If it's a generous gift and you're in the vicinity of where we are, I'll sign a copy of my book, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living, and make sure you get it, okay? You can call me. If you have a seed to sow, I'd be glad to sign and write a, a scripture verse and a prayer in, in it for you and pray over this because this book is loaded with truths that God gave me on the subject of success. Prophetically, he gave me all of these keys and formulas that'll bless your life. You need this and the other books and writings. All right, I look forward to seeing you. Any live event we're gonna be at, see you there. But in the meantime, we have this portal online, this relationship online. You know, I ask people sometimes when they write or they call and I'm like, where do we meet? And, and most often, mo more often than as much as any other way, they say, no, we never met. I've been following you online. Bless you. Keep doing it. Share this with everybody. Let's bring more people into the family here. Because God's pouring out his spirit. And this is the day of the manifestations of his blessings for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'll talk to you in the next one. Be blessed. Love you much. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, 
God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.